I'll take this opportunity to invite our Secretary General of the National Unity Platform. David Lewis. And he's going to tell us what does the National Unity Platform stand for? When we talk about a new Uganda, what does that vision look like? So we understand that we are not here only to fight for Museveni to leave. We are here to improve the lives of our brothers and sisters. Thank you, Secretary General, for the work you are doing, for your leadership, for all the changes that have been made in our party. And I'm looking forward to listening to his message. And I want all of you to stand up and give him a big round of applause. Welcome, Secretary General. Thank you very much. People power. power. Our power. power. NUP. Everywhere. Everywhere. President Wanga Kusoke Mu. Aduina niwe, aduina sebe ni ni mwenye u. Aduina ni, aduina sebe ni ni. Aduina niwe, aduina sebe ni ni mwenye u. Aduina ni, aduina sebe ni ni. People power, kusoke me. Take your seats. Mr. President, uh, Deputy President, the leader of our parliamentary team, uh, the Honorable the leader of our diaspora team, and your deputy. Uh, of course, the chapter leader of the Chicago chapter. Very important to be very delighted to see you, uh, Dr. Daniels, and uh, of course, Professor Milton Arimadi. We are always delighted to have you um, at all these events and we take the advice and everything. So my task is really to talk about what kind of Uganda are we looking at. The theme of this convention is envisioning a new Uganda. Envisioning a new Uganda. Envisioning a new Uganda. Um, I mean, Envisioning a new Uganda presupposes that we are in the old Uganda today and we want to go into a new Uganda. And so that means that we will have to work very hard. And I want to salute every single one of you who is working extremely hard to see that we get from this point to the next point. Because right now where we are is not where we want to be. When we say that we are talking about a new Uganda, it means that the Uganda we have today is not the Uganda we want to be in. It's not the Uganda we want to be in. And yesterday, we were very glad to receive uh, people who commented, to, uh, who presented here. They were talking about the different things that define the current Uganda that we're in. The human rights violations, enforced disappearances, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking people away from uh, their land and not compensating them, and so many other problems that they talked about. And so for us, our main mission as a national energy platform under, our, the, under the leadership of our president is to usher Uganda, the current Uganda we have, into a new Uganda. And so we want to cross over from this Uganda to the next Uganda. But before I go into that, I want to appreciate you, comrades of the diaspora, for the great work. I want to appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah, you guys challenge us. You guys challenge us. Today, your leaders were telling us about the average cost that you put in to come for this convention. And it is indeed a sacrifice for you to sacrifice and come here and spend your time and spend money means that you really have Uganda at heart and you have the national energy platform at heart. I am always on calls with several members of the diaspora 
And you know, I know how busy it is. I know how busy life in America is and the demands of your time. But when you're called upon to go and demonstrate, you go there and demonstrate. When you're called upon to give to the party, you, you are able to support the party. When you're called upon to support the cause in one or the other, you are always there. Every time they abduct somebody, they arrest somebody, sometimes before even we in Uganda have posted about it, you see thousands of posts from the diaspora, people demanding. So that is why we are here to salute you, comrades with the diaspora. Thank you so much for the great work that you do. And of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you do matters. Like the president mentioned in the message which I was reading earlier in uh, the, the message in the, in the program, these small acts which all of us do contribute greatly. Dr. Gaum has been talking about the sanctions. You might have protested on one day and forgot about it. But it is that time when you went out in the winter on the streets to protest that resulted into those sanctions. So I want to encourage you to continue protesting, to continue speaking out, because that works. We at, in Uganda have been able to achieve different things. I had Dr. Bauma boasting, we've all been able to also achieve uh, different things. Uh, comrades in the diaspora, you have the best party headquarter in the whole country. You know that. We know that. If you achieve this year. And we have, uh, of course, established offices in the different parts of the country. We have been able to have different policy alternatives. We have set up Kunga committees in the different parts of the country. Comrade Kaluya, I didn't introduce you because you, you, you sat on that side. But this gentleman is our mobilization secretary for Eastern Uganda. And there is a lot of work going on in mobilization, trying to mobilize the country. And of course, um, under the good leadership of our Honorable Senyoni and our brother Waiswa, we are doing great with communications and media. Yesterday someone called Waiswa a general because he has fought many battles and won them, apparently. Media, media battles and other battles. Under our legal and human rights department, you've seen our lawyers every day moving up and down, different jails, uh, different uh, courts, different places to fight for our people. Uh, I don't know if our brother Nubian is in here, but under his department, arts, culture, and sports, you've seen us do uh, sports activities in the different parts of the country. And we are determined uh, to do all that because we want to continue mobilizing, we want to continue speaking out, out to the people. Uh, the other day, you know, we were supposed to have our four-year celebration as a national platform, and then uh, these people say they're using Kololo, although even today there was a function, a big function at the same place, because they fear, they know, they think that when you be, any UP people gather at Kololo, maybe they will not leave. <laughs> they, they are afraid of us. They know that we are women and men on a mission. So, when we're talking about four years, I was having a discussion with the president, and I said even at the press that day that I thought the most important achievement we've been able to achieve in these four years of NUP is awakening the people of Uganda. And I gave an example of that young man you see, who all of you saw. You remember and see yes. in the city? Yes. Where else would you see get the guts, the audacity, the affluent yes. to get concerned about what is happening in the country? But thanks to our president and his message, now every time you go to a border border state, they are talking about their country. Every time you go to a Chilombe, when you go to we walk in Zamakara, Amanda, we make that thing. Chokero Chamanda. So, every time you go to those places, the paragon of Mandia is jam. Uganda wa mesiwe wakami, na hee, ena hindi beta gana yusu kubi. 
Never now. Every time you go to those places, people are talking about politics. People are talking about their council. So that has been the main achievement of the National Unity Platform and the People Power Movement. That right now, every time someone tries to drag people into a useless conversation, even in the comments on social media, people will be talking about political prisoners, people will be talking about the country, people will be talking about what has gone wrong with our country. So that is the most important thing. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, of course we've been able to achieve many things. I want to report to you, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, this year and last year, we had the nationwide tour. And the nationwide tour took us to Angola in Barara and uh, people received Musinguzi in their thousands. The people of Angola came out and uh, showed a lot of love to the president. And recently, of course, we are in other parts, Sinjiro and other places in Angola. In Tungamo, you saw what was going on there. We were in Acholi at some point. Uh, in Dokolo and other parts, and you saw how people received the message of change. We were in Musoga, Abasoga Muriwa. Yeah, we were in Jinja and those places. And uh, thanks to the people of Musoga, they are still saying enough is enough. We went to Kusia, and Kusia broke its own record. But before then, we also were in Mayuge. In Mayuge is also in Musoga. But when we went to Kusia, the people of Busia say, we are going to Tukenda Kumaka Zakajanja. Mwabalabu. So went to Bugisu in Imbali. And you saw what was going on in Imbali. Went to Arua in West Side. Mama. Our before and here. And the people of West Side, you see that in the West Coast. We are in Panamoja, and we are going back to Panamoja and Teso. Because some of our activities were blocked, we were in Lira, in Lango, and all of you saw the valley here. We went to Kavari, where the gym thought they had a strong uh, footprint, but they couldn't uh, measure up. They tried to block us, and we broke the blockages and talked to the people of Kavari. We are in Unyono, in Hoima, we are in Fort Porto, in Toro, we are in Kasese, in Wenzoli. And very recently and very profoundly, we were in Masaka in Uganda. Yeah. So the revolutionary train has continued moving all across the country, and it is our intention, ladies and gentlemen, to reach everywhere with the message of change. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about, uh, I was asked to talk about what happened to the vision in Uganda. Um, some of the things, we, every time we reach this feast, we call this a feast fight. The feast fight is just in going to what we stand for. What we want a new Uganda to look like. And the first point, ladies and gentlemen, is to have democracy, respect for democracy, the rule of law, and human rights. That is the first. When we talk about the feast fight, we are five critical points that we want to bring about in Uganda. We want to put an end to the humiliation of the people of Uganda. The humiliation. All of you know how Uganda is like humiliated every single day. You saw what you said, what happened to our brother at jail. How they picked him up, beat him up, humiliated him, and brought him the following day, planted, made the pigs at his house, and right now it is in jail. Our brother from Yan is in detention. Every time he tries to go to court, they say the military generals are sick. And you know, the, the, those military people are the judges. We are saying no, civilians should not be tried in military courts. So when we talk about human rights and the, the rule of law, respect for democracy, we want to put an end to that. You remember in Arua, this guy planted guns in our president's home. From that time, he has been demanding for those guns. The second point is inclusive economic development. Inclusive economic development. Previous study they used to say we shall not leave, we shall not wait for Karamoja to develop. And we are saying that is wrong. 
We want the whole country to develop. We do not want only sections of the population to develop. We do not want northern Uganda to be left behind. We do not want uh, parts of Tesla to be left behind. We want inclusive economic development. We want development for every single person. Because every person in Uganda pays taxes, but those taxes benefit only a few. And we want to put an end to that. We want to make sure that the money which the people of Uganda contribute in taxes uh, helps them equally across the board. We want every Uganda to have a fair chance a fair opportunity. Whether you're born in Karamoja, whether you're born in Jeso, whether you're born in Angoli, we want a, a government which gives fair chance to each of these individuals to succeed. We want a child who goes to a school in, in Usoka to have the same opportunity as someone, as a, as a, as a child who goes to a school uh, in, in Barara or wherever. And that is why we talk about inclusive economic development. In terms of uh, the, the mineral resources, we want these mineral resources to support the people of Uganda, not just a few individuals. So we want inclusive economic development. Number three, ladies and gentlemen, quality public services. You all know what is going on in our hospitals. You all know what is going on in our schools. Children are studying under trees. There's no access to medication in our country. Because they know that when they get sick, they will be on the next flight out of Uganda to some place to get treatment. You, can, you guys know how many Ugandan officials have died from Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi. You can imagine. Why? Because at Mulago they cannot get those services. Not that they trust Mulago itself. They don't trust it for, for two reasons. Because of lack of equipment and all that. But also because they don't, because of the sense of fear and insecurity in the country, they, they, they don't trust their own system. So that's why they have to run away to get treatment elsewhere. So, ladies and gentlemen, we want to have equal access to quality public services, especially healthcare and education. Because, like the Lord said yesterday, uh, Mandela told us education is the most important, powerful weapon you can use to change the world. So, if we want to develop our country, we must invest in education, we must invest in healthcare. <laughs> Some people, ignorant, they ask NUP where we stand. They think that policy is something that is very complex. And we have been telling them that even if we have the money which to save any has, the same amount of money they use, it is just a matter of putting that money where Ugandans are. Yeah. Just changing the priorities. The three trillion shillings they spend in classified expenditure every year, that money can improve the lives of our people. The money that we lose through corruption, more than 10 trillion every year, is enough to construct very good roads for our country, Uganda. So we are saying that let's put, let's change our priorities. It is Thomas Sankara who said that we must make a decision whether to have champagne for a few or clean water for all. Wow. And so, for us as a nationality platform, we believe that we shouldn't have champagne for a few. We should have clean water for every single Ugandan. And that clean water, you can put it in other sectors. The other thing we talk about, number four, is land, agriculture, and natural resources. I already talked about land, you know, land grabbing. We want Ugandans to own their land and to feel secure. We want to put an end to land grabbing. Yes. We want to put an end to this situation where people are just chased off their land without compensation. We want to make sure that we develop. Because right now, people are not sure. You heard what, what has happened with the eco and how many people have been displaced and all that. So we want people to have security of tenure. Other businesses now can wake up on a day as they wish and tell you to leave your land. And you, you, you don't have anywhere to go. You got courts of law, a case takes 20 years in the court system. If you don't have money, that's in Amusawa. That is the situation we have in our country. So that is one other thing that we are very passionate about. I talked about agriculture and natural resources. 
We want Uganda's oil to benefit the people of Uganda. We want Uganda's gold to benefit the people of Uganda. Uganda's diamond, everything that is Uganda, we want them to benefit the people of Uganda. And finally, uh, under democracy and uh, human rights, one of the aspects I didn't talk about was building strong institutions. Our President Chagula, he does not believe in being a strong man, but in being able to build strong institutions. That's why in NUP, you see different leaders. And that's why the diaspora is able to function the way it functions, because we want the diaspora to be an independent and strong institution. Not coming in every day to say, do this, do that, do the other. And that does not mean that we do not consult each other, we consult each other, but we want to build strong institutions. Finally, uh, security and international relations, that is uh, number five. We believe that security does not mean absence of war, but security means justice. Security means equal opportunity. Security means equality. Security means where the citizens of Uganda are at peace with themselves and the country is at, at peace with its neighbors. So we want to, to bring about security that is lasting, but we shall not achieve all these. All these are grand ideas which we cannot achieve until we send away the dictatorship. So, Dr. Kaumala, like you say, many people keep saying, you guys are only talking about seven in Mascom, seven in Mascom. Yes, because he is a hindrance to achieving these things. One of the things which the president said in the last campaign, and it was as if he was prophesying, he said that five years of Museveni, do you remember that speech? Yes. He said five more years of Museveni will mean five more years of corruption, five more years of uh, senseless death, five more years of all these problems. Today you saw what happened at home. People being buried under garbage yes. in each case. People being buried under garbage, Kasasino. You know, by the last time I checked, there were about maybe close to 10 people dead. 12 now. So you can imagine the senseless killings. So we want the people of Uganda to have better lives. But that can only happen when we come together and change our country. Um, maybe I'll have another opportunity to talk about it, but I want us to believe in ourselves. Let's have faith. Let us remain committed. Let us continue doing everything that we can do to change our country. Because we cannot achieve all these lofty ideas when the dictatorship is still there. And I can assure you, God being on our side and ourselves being determined, there is nothing we shall not be able to achieve. Thank you.